Project Explorer for AutoCAD Civil 3D is already very well known as a very capable report generator, but what we've tried to concentrate on this latest release of the product is the ability to make edits to the Civil model directly from the Project Explorer user interface. And it means that you can make edits to your model extremely efficiently because all of the information that you need is provided within a single panel, divided up into all of these different categories of objects. So for surfaces, for example, we can make changes to the display style almost instantly by double-clicking the value in the Project Explorer window and making a change almost instantly. Equally, changing the name of the surface is just as straightforward. Now these editing capabilities really come into their own when we start looking at more complex objects like corridors and assemblies. If I go to this particular corridor here, which I'm highlighting in the viewport, let's use the keyboard shortcuts in Project Explorer to zoom directly to that. Now we have all of the geometry settings that are making up the geometry of this particular corridor displayed down here, and you can see that we can make edits to them directly. First of all, I'm going to rebuild all of the out-of-date corridors just to make sure that all of my geometry in this drawing is up to date. Next, I'm going to activate the automatic rebuild feature for this particular corridor, which means that any changes I make to my corridor geometry in this part of the panel will be reflected in the viewport immediately. So for example, let's say that I wanted to increase the length of this corridor geometry from this point here up to station or chainage 250. So I can do that instantly from here just by double clicking 212, setting that value to 250, and you can see that my corridor geometry is updated instantly. Now this particular part of the corridor is being driven by an assembly called Main Road Full Section. Let's go to the Assemblies tab now and look at the geometry of that assembly in more detail. Here's the preview of my assembly, and here are the sub-assemblies which are making up the geometry of the assembly. First of all, I can look through each of these sub-assemblies, and you can see that the assembly is being identified very easily for me on the viewport. We have the ability to change the vertical scale to look at these um, items in a little bit more detail. Now what I'd like to do is to make a change to the footpath width. So let's find that here. Okay, there's my footpath, which is at the moment is a two and a half meter width. Let's change that to five. And again, you can see that corridor being updated instantly. We have to make a corresponding update to this assembly as well. So this is the assembly that I'm interested in here. Again, if I go to the footpath and change that to five, you can see how quickly I can make changes to my corridor geometry, which would otherwise involve going through multiple object properties panels within the standard Civil 3D user interface. These editing capabilities in the product can be used to great effect when editing pipe network geometry in Civil 3D. And here you can see I have the pipe networks tab enabled. Here's one pipe network in this drawing, which I can zoom to using the keyboard shortcuts. And here we have a list of the individual structures and pipes connected to this uh, pipe network. If I hover over these two pipes here, you can see that we have a couple of violations which I'd like to address using the editing capabilities in Project Explorer. One of the things you'll notice is that there's a wide array of parameters available for editing under the Pipe Networks tab. And I'd like to simplify things a little bit by hiding some of these parameters that I'm not interested in when editing this geometry. So this is where the Layout Options feature can be extremely useful. I'm going to turn off many of these parameters that I'm not interested in viewing when making these edits. So to simplify that process, let's use a layout template that I created earlier, and that will just limit the number of parameters available to me in the panel. This is the pipe I'm going to look at first. You can see down here that in the network view we have the ability to select any start and end structure and instantly view the shortest path between those two points on the pipe network. In this case, because I'm editing a single pipe, I'd like to use the lock feature to lock the pipe network to that individual pipe that I'm working on. And that allows me to see why this pipe cover violation is being generated. Another thing we can do is to filter the structures list so that we're only looking at the two structures that are connected to the selected pipe. Or indeed, we could hide the structures altogether and just look at the pipe parameters themselves. So you can see here that to address the pipe cover violation on this pipe, I need to change the elevation. So I just double click the elevation value and that comes up with this special panel here that allows me to decide how to edit the elevation of this pipe. 
I can decide which parts of the elevation I want to hold. So in this case, if I make a change to the start elevation, the end of ele elevation will be held and the slope will be varied. I want to keep my slope of 8%. So I'm going to hold the slope and make a change to the start elevation, which has the effect of changing the end elevation as well. If I click OK, I can instantly see the change in my network view and I can instantly see how that pipe cover violation has been impacted by the changes. And you can see that I'm not quite there yet. So let's make a second change to the elevation. Again, holding the slope and increasing that to 624.5 at the start. And that should deal with the pipe cover um, violation, which it has indeed done. Let's zoom into this pipe in the viewport. And we can see now that we still have a pipe length violation of 7 meters. So let's go back to my structures and you can see that this structure here is one that I might wish to edit. So I could drag this around in the viewport or I could make a more accurate change by changing the northing here. And let's decrease that by around 8 meters. And you can see now that those violations have been solved. Thank you for watching.